Hello and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a suggestion from Witherest of the Wolves. And they suggest... Make a habitable planet out of all of our solar system's moons, please. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit interesting. Let's see, let's go ahead and start by adding our sun. Now, the only way I could think to actually make a habitable planet would be to... Well, collide all the moons together, and then put them in the habitable zone, but that's actually going to be very difficult, so let's go ahead and clear out the sun. Because we're going to have to actually halt velocities to get all these moons to actually collapse and collide into each other. Which might prove a little bit difficult to do, but let's go ahead and give this a shot. So let's start with Earth. Earth has one of the biggest moons in the solar system. Uh, oh, there's Earth. It looks very, very small from here. Drop Earth in. Oh, well, yeah, let's halt the time. Wow, uh, what is going on with the camera? There we go. And you can see Luna, our moon. Or as we just call it, moon. And the new high-res textures look absolutely great in the new Alpha 19.5 update. Let's go ahead and zoom back out, and let's delete Earth. Now to add moons, you can just click on whole system up here at the top. So let's go ahead and add Mars, which has two little asteroid moons. Let's go ahead and check them out. We have Deimos and Phobos. Let's do the same for Jupiter. Jupiter has the most moons in our solar system. Look at this. Look at all of those moons. Yeah, Jupiter has a lot of moons. So let's go ahead and delete Jupiter now. Let's do the exact same for Saturn. Saturn also has a lot of moons. Get rid of Saturn. Let's do this for Uranus. And Neptune. Neptune doesn't have that many moons. And last, but not least, Pluto. Pluto actually has a couple moons. So let's go ahead and clear out Pluto. And there is most of the moons of our solar system. You can kind of see them just twinkling against the background there. Looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just turn off the labels. Just kind of see all the moons. They're like little tiny stars just twinkling away. Okay, let's turn back on the labels. And now I guess we just hit play and wait for them to actually just fall into each other. Now you're seeing like little flashes of light over here from the moons actually colliding. I'm gonna keep the powers up so we can halt all velocities when things get a little bit too hectic. It's actually surprisingly laggy. And a lot of these are actually missing each other. Luna looks like it's having a lot of collisions. It's equivalent to 1.01 .01 moons, and look at that. A huge chunk is just taken out of Luna. Ooh, it just had a huge collision with Io which is the bigger mass, so Io remains, the moon is gone. Look at those molten spots. They kind of faded out pretty quick. Everything is being pulled towards Io now. Oh no. Okay, there we go. Whenever we get like a huge, uh... oh, Io just merged with Ganymede. Ganymede is now the biggest moon. Look at that eccentric orbit there. It's pretty cool. Let's halt all velocities again and let everything kind of fall towards Ganymede now. Wow, look at those huge chunks taken out. This is quite laggy. Ooh, that was a pretty big collision. So have all these little asteroids that need to fall in. Halt all velocities. We don't want anything actually launching away. Now the question is, I think Ganymede is actually going to consume Titan, but we'll find out.
<laughs> you guys see that orbital trail? That was actually kind of cool looking. And there's a big collision. And halt all velocities. Make sure any particles do not run away. And we now have, I guess, a planet that is 8.67 moons. And let's halt all velocities once more. I should probably slow down time. So it seems like everything is moving towards Ganymede, but the problem is if I speed up time too much, they'll fly right through, just like that. You see the trail went right through it, so it just flew right through. And there's not really an option to just kind of merge everything together, so what I can do is I can slow down time and I can shrink the system. And everything will get closer and closer, I do believe. Hopefully that works. Oh, check that out. It's like a very warm asteroid. It's got a comet tail and stuff. That's pretty cool. And there we go. That should hopefully speed things up a little bit. It went right through. Let's uh, shrink the system a bit more. Things are no longer colliding with this Ganymede. So, even if all these things were to collide, I think it would only be equivalent to about 9 moons. So, let's just go ahead and use that value there. Now, the water has gone up ever so slightly. Let's, uh... I'm sure there's a lot of water content in these asteroids though, right? Uh, it doesn't appear so. Most of it's just silicates, to be honest. So let's go ahead and start a new simulation. And let's work with what we got. So let's go ahead and add in... Actually, let's go with a red dwarf like Proxima Centauri. And let's go ahead and view the habitable region. Now, it's a small planet, so it's not going to be able to have a super dense atmosphere, really. What we're going to do is we're going to just add in Ganymede. And let's make it orbit around in the warmer region of the habitable zone. Okay, let's change its mass. Whoops, misclick there. To low. To nine moons. Now, if we place Luna next to it, you can see that it's quite small. If we drop something like Mercury next to it, it should be quite a bit bigger. Yes, Mercury is quite small compared to this. Earth beside it. Uh, I have to say that it's pretty big, but not as big as Earth. Let's try Mars. It is bigger than Mars, so I would be able to classify this as definitely a planet. Okay, so it is currently 35 degrees Celsius. Now there's a few things this planet's going to need, and the first thing would probably be a very large iron core, which is going to shrink it down a little bit. There we go. So we have a nice large iron core, just like Earth. 
Earth. In fact, for comparison, let's put Earth right over here. Uh, it's actually got an iron core bigger than Earth. I don't think it needs an iron core that big, so there we go. And what that'll allow it to do is... Let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, under climate. I cannot actually make it the same values as Earth because, well, it's not really like a... See, Earth has parameters in this game that other planets do not have. That makes it kind of unique, like a unique object in the game. So the most I can really do is I can go over here to the atmosphere. And since it is roughly one ninth or one eighth of what the what Earth is, we'll add an atmospheric pressure of what would be one eighth. One eighth would be. We could go to a value of two. Let's go with one point five atmospheres and pressure. So it should have a pretty thick atmosphere now. If I go over to climate. Uh, that doesn't seem to do anything. There we go. So it has an atmosphere. Actually, kind of darkish atmosphere, if you guys saw that. The next thing we're going to need is a magnetic field. But that should have been created by the... Iron that we actually added to the core. So let's go ahead and add a magnetic field now. Which might be under... Materials... Ah, there it is. So, what would be Earth's magnetic field? 0 0.319 Gauss, so let's go ahead and let's go with a value of 200. And it should have a nice magnetic field. Let's go ahead and view it. Ah, very nice. So that atmosphere should not be taken away. Of course, it had a lot of asteroids hit it. So, let's just go ahead and throw Halley's Comet at it for an example. A lot of those moons were asteroids, which probably contain a lot of water. And as they collided, it would have added a lot of water to the surface. How much? I really don't know, to be honest. But let's go ahead and give this planet kind of a nice liquid ocean. Ah, there we go. Well, it's still ice, but... Let's just say there was about that much water on this new planet. Oops, I just totally removed it. Okay. So there we go. Now we have kind of a nice kind of ice ocean. Not really liquid yet. Now why is it not liquid? We have an atmosphere, but it's still not quite warm enough. Maybe perhaps a lot of those collisions covered the surface in ash, making it kind of a black or gray surface that's not very reflective, and kind of decreased the albedo, which should increase the temperature. And it is still not quite warm enough. Now I would say it's habitable, but the, these, these oceans are not liquid yet. If I speed up time, they might actually thaw. Ah, there we go. So, the planet's a bit on a colder end. But, it's definitely habitable. We can't really change the colors of this planet, though. Because it's not technically a custom planet in the game. The only thing we could really do is just kind of give it water and an atmosphere. Which, even then, the atmosphere seems to be mostly missing. No real clouds or anything, because it's not a super thick atmosphere that I actually added to this planet. If we go to the surface pressure, go to atmospheres, we have a value of 0 0.2. A value of 1 should be equivalent to 1 atmosphere pressure, which would be the atmosphere on Earth. But since it's a planet that's around 1 8th the size of Earth, if I'm correct, in mass, value of... what would that be? I guess uh, one tenth, roughly. But if we go to moons here, yeah, it's this uh, planet's around one eighth the mass of Earth, so I didn't want to go too in, too dense on the atmosphere. Of course, we could go a little bit more crazy and give it one atmosphere of pressure, 
Because, I mean, that's not completely unreasonable. There's planets in our very own solar system that have very, very thick atmospheres, such as Venus. So let's go ahead and add a value of 1. Oh, and that heated up the planet big time. Look at that, the surface temperature is now 210 degrees. Interesting. Now that is on Earth scale, right? This does have an atmosphere, atmosphere of one, right? I think so. Uh, that'd be under climate, which Earth is freezing over. <laughs> uh, let's see. Show atmosphere, atmosphere pressure. So yeah, that's roughly a value of one. As atmosphere's pressure is based off of one Earth atmosphere. So if this had one Earth atmosphere, it actually overheats quite a bit. And you don't even get fancy clouds or anything like that. So let's go ahead and reduce this back down. Let's go over with a value of 0.3 atmospheres of pressure and see if the oceans return. Well, that was only enough to bring it down to roughly 100 degrees Celsius. It's still quite warm. So let's try 2.5. Okay, that's cooling down quite a bit. So, still too much atmosphere, at least when it's this close to the star itself. And that is dropping the temperature back down. Of course, there is another problem with orbiting around Proxima Centauri like this, this close, and that is the fact that Proxima Centauri is actually a very, very active star. Red dwarfs are known for being very active and having pretty crazy outbursts of solar radiation, solar winds, and basically being this close to Proxima Centauri might not be good. There might be high amounts of radiation, there might be uh, just high levels of solar wind that might actually blow away this atmosphere. And of course, being this close to the star, there's also a chance that this planet might actually be tidally locked. But if it was orbiting around something like the sun, that wouldn't really be too much of a worry. I just kind of wanted to use Proxima Centauri as just something fun. Something that's not the sun for once. But there you go. There's essentially a terraformable world. It is very hot right now. Uh, the temperature didn't seem to climb back down, probably due to the albedo, which I can increase a little bit and bring back down the temperature slightly. And there we go. We have a totally habitable world orbiting around a red dwarf made up of the solar system's moons. I can't add any green texture or anything like that because once again it's not a custom planet, but there you go. Anyways, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.